Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the award committee. It's really an honor. Uh, I'd like to give my credits to uh, my collaborators, Fawad, Fanbai, uh, Marco Cortesa, and Ramesh. So this is a collaboration among USC, Rutgers, and GM. So among all the reasons what, that we desire an autonomous driving car, the one premise and one design goal is the reliability. So human drivers are easily distracted by uh, checking their phones, drinking their coffee. But on average, human drivers are actually good drivers. They can manage to drive below uh, almost 100 million miles between fatalities. So with autonomous driving cars, we're asking this question, can we reach the same level of reliability if not much safer? So autonomous driving cars are relying on advanced sensing to achieve that kind of reliability. In the long range, we have radar to detect distant objects, uh, adaptive cruise control. Uh, in the middle range, we have LIDAR to detect objects, mapping, and localization. In the short range, we have stereo cameras for uh, surrounding view monitoring. So here's an example of uh, uh, LIDAR's output. So you can see that in the LIDAR, we can detect uh, cars in the environment. And if you look closely, those cars generate shadows where no, no, absolutely no information is percepted by the LiDAR. So this reveals a fundamental limitation of these 3D sensors. They are limited by line of sight. Here's another example of stereo cameras output. So imagine you're a driver driving a car following this white SUV. You cannot see anything beyond the SUV. The SUV is blocking your view. So here's a little animation. And later you'll see there's actually a stopping vehicle uh, that's, that makes you have to change lanes to overtake. So what if we can use the white car sensors to extend our vision so that we, we know that we're aware of the black car ahead of time? So next I'm going to show you another example that, um, that says uh, extended vision could help improve safety and that poor visibility could sometimes be very dangerous. So imagine you're driving a highway, and you can see clearly there's an oncoming blue vehicle. But if there is a red car in front of you, occluding your vision, then you don't know that oncoming vehicle. If at this point you decide to change lanes to overtake that vehicle, dangerous things could happen. So what we are trying to do is to wirelessly share what the red car can see to the black car, so that be the human driver or machine driver they can actually see through the occlusion. This particular functionality, we call it augmented vehicular reality. To achieve that vision, we have to address several challenges. First of all, accurate positioning. The red car has to position the blue car accurately. And to, transmit that, uh, to transform that perspective to the receiver, we have to relatively localize the uh, position between the transmitter and receiver. With D and R, we can calculate X. And between vehicles, there is extremely limited bandwidth we have to deal with. And uh, all this can happen very fast. The cars could be cruising at 80 miles per hour. So we have to manage AVR with low latency. So next, I'm going to introduce some contributions to our paper that address those challenges one by one. So for accurate positioning, we relative position um, the transmitter and receiver using a 3D sparse feature map. And uh, we transform the perspective from, from the transmitter to the receiver. In terms of the bandwidth, we extract dynamic objects and transmit only dynamic objects. And uh, we calculate the motion vector to compensate for bandwidth difference. In terms of latency, we optimize our pipeline to achieve very low latency and high throughput. We use motion prediction to high latency. So first up, accurate positioning. Um, before I go to any details, I need to give you some background on 3D perception. So be the LiDAR or stereo camera, they all represent the environment using a point cloud. A point cloud is a representation of the environment that a, a cloud of voxels can uh, depict the environment, be it a car or a, a building. The voxel has th several attributes, a position, x, y, z coordinate, and a co color and a reflection intensity. Depending on your uh, perception approach, if it's a stereo camera, you have color information. If it, you have a LiDAR, you have reflection intensity. So we use that 3D perception capability to relative position the transmitter receiver. 
The idea is to use common landmarks on the roadside so that each car can position themselves with respect to the common landmark. Subtracting those, those two vectors, we know their relative position. Instead of using landmarks, we actually use features on the trees, buildings, and parking cars uh, on the roadside. Those green dots are static features we extracted. Note that we don't extract any features from the dynamic car. So those features can be collected by one traversal of the street. We use simultaneous localization mapping algorithm to build a, a 3D feature map. Once we have that map, we can, when the transmitter receivers see the same feature again, they can match those features with those in the map so that they know their position with respect to the origin of the map. Again, similarly, subtracting the two vector, vectors, we know the uh, relative position. Once we know the relative position, the, we transform the perspective to the receiver by adding those two vectors so that the receiver know when, once they get the point cloud of the car, it knows where to insert that point cloud into its own perspective. And uh, next up, we, we talk about latency, uh, talk about bandwidth. So to give you some context, um, the stereo camera we use are generating a full point cloud per frame, about five megabytes. Transmitting that five megabytes at 30 frames per second require almost 1,000 megabps. If you're only transmitting a single car, the number is 80 megabps. So what we have right now between vehicles, we have dedicated short range communication, DSRC, which is only offering six to 27 megabps. And 802.11G is 60 to 54. In reality, both of them are only achieving five megabps. So clearly there's a huge gap between what we want and what we have. So to deal with the bandwidth, the first step is to extract the dynamic objects. So here is an example showing how we do that. Um, at frame one, this black car can position the blue car at C C1, frame two, C2. The black car knows its own motion. By compensating the own motion, the black car can calculate C2 plus V. And by comparing C2 plus V with C1, they can calculate the absolute motion of the blue car. We apply the same calculation on the whole point cloud so that we can easily differentiate which part of the scene is static, which part of the scene is moving. For the static part, the difference is almost zero. Once we get the absolute motion vectors, we can transmit that motion vectors adaptively based on the bandwidth availability. For example, if we have, high, if we have high bandwidth, we can transmit point cloud frame by frame. If we have low bandwidth, we can transmit an initial point cloud followed by multiple motion vectors for the receiver to reconstruct. About latency, we carefully optimize our pipeline. So on the top green bar, we show several computation module uh, in our pipeline. And for example, one technique is to combine those common uh, computation to, into one module so that we can cut latency. And we carefully balance the uh, three-stage three stage pipeline so that they are evenly distributed uh, to achieve high throughput. So we evaluate our uh, prototype in several aspects. Uh, I'm gonna focus on first three. The benefits of AVR in EDUS and the autonomous driving, end-to-end -end performance and reconstruction accuracy. The evaluation setup is as follows. We, uh, we equip a vehicle with a, a Linware laptop with a GPU. We attach the laptop with a stereo camera and a wireless access point. We replicate the set same setup uh, with a second vehicle. We use, we use the wireless bridging mode to establish the B2B link. Here's the pictures of the actual setup. And in the experiment, we drive one vehicle ahead of the other and transmitting the leader's view to the follower. The follower can, by merging the view together, the follower can build a distended vision. So here's an example showing how autonomous driving can benefit from AVR. We design a simple road detection algorithm and path planning algorithm. This, this figure shows the point cloud of the, uh, the follower, and uh, the blue area is the drivable space detected. The green line with green courses is the planned path output. So without AVR, the follower is actually trying to change left, change lanes to the left, and overtake the white vehicle in front. Uh, with AVR, the follower is always aware there is an oncoming, oncoming vehicle, so that it decides to follow in lane. So this figure shows the drivable, drivable space detected. 
The red one is with AVR, the blue one is without. So AVR can almost extend the drive with space by uh, 2x. And uh, this figure shows the plant path angle. So the blue one, again, the blue one is without AVR, the red one is with AVR. Without AVR, it's always trying to change left and overtake right until the point that the follower actually see the oncoming vehicle. So this example shows AVR can help path planner to avoid dangerous and wasteful lane change maneuver. Here, this table shows the end-to-end -end result. We evaluate our prototype in full and dynamic mode. Full mode meaning we share the full point cloud of the whole scene. Dynamic mode meaning we only share the dynamic part. So you can see the throughput number is very different. For full, we, we require 360 megabps, and dynamic is only 35. AVR reduced almost 10x of the bandwidth required for in dynamic mode. And uh, the motion vectors that per frame shows that we can adapt to the bandwidth uh, smoothly. For full mode, the actual bandwidth required is more than the link we have. So actually, in, in evaluation, we actually have to transmit motion vectors to compensate for that difference. This figure shows the pipeline, the latency evaluation. So uh, we have three stages, pre-processing, localization, and post-processing. Post um, AVR achieves 30 frames per second using this three-stage pipeline. The longest uh, latency for a stage is about 33 uh, milliseconds, which is the localization part. And if you look, if you follow the blue ones, this is one frame going through all stages. The end-to-end -end latency is about 96 milliseconds. Reconstruction accuracy. So we show here one example of uh, the er reconstruction error while the car is cruising at 20 miles per hour. We evaluate the accuracy for both reconstructing a static objects and uh, moving objects. We show the medium and 90th percentile uh, error. For static, we, have, we achieve 2.7 centimeter error. For 90th percentile, 4.5 centimeter. For moving objects, it's only seven centimeter and 19 centimeter. The caveat here is that um, camera calibration could sometimes increase the error. So we evaluate the, the, everything in the paper. You can welcome to see the paper. Um, AVR achieves high reconstruction fidelity, and uh, the major resource, the major source of error, is motion estimation and uh, camera calibration. Um, to deal with that tool limitation, we are actively working to incorporate LiDAR into our pipeline so that hopefully LiDAR can increase the accuracy and range, and it has the more robustness to poor visibility compared to stereo camera. Another thought we have is a cooperative AVR. For example, if you have two vehicles driving side by side, they have a majority of the view overlapping with each other so that when sharing the view, vehicle B can, only, can share only the missing part uh, to vehicle A. That will save a lot of bandwidth too. Here's a little demo show, summarizing our design and results. Uh, the first step is to build a map by traversing one segment. And with that map, the, both the transmitter and receiver can localize themselves uh, when traversing the same segment. Here's the leader's view and the follower's view both are uh, reconstructed point cloud from stereo camera. So when the leader transmits objects to the follower, the follower can reconstruct the extended view showing on the top. And as a comparison, showing the bottom is the original view. So you see in the extended view, occluded and out of range objects are visible now. So in conclusion, AVR breaks the line of sight limit to see beyond occlusion and extend 3D's perception range. It also inspires more informed driving decisions. With that, I'll thank you for your attention and I'm glad to take questions.